Buenos dias, all you beautiful souls out there. Thank you for tuning in to my channel. We're here studying the lessons of A Course in Miracles, and today we're going to be looking at Double Infinity, lesson number 88. We are still in a review period. Also, today is day five, or excuse me, day six of seven days of refeeding from my water fasting experience here in Costa Rica. Water is life. Grab yourself some water, grab your favorite book, and let's jump into these lessons. All right, today I feel like is a continuation in a way from yesterday because I had this interesting meditation about kind of like shedding light on the truth about our society and all the ways in which we've been indoctrinated and lured and tempted and comforted and you know, unnecessarily coddled and domesticated. So today's two lessons for review almost seem like they follow on as if they're in a sequential order that's building. And and even within this, this choice of these two lessons, the light has come and I'm under no law but God's, it feels like there's there's a reason that they're um they're on top of each other in this selection of just these two. So we'll get into that too. All right, so here we go. First lesson for review, the light has come. In choosing salvation rather than attack, I merely choose to recognize what is already there. Salvation is a decision made already. Attack and grievances are not there to choose. That is why I always choose between truth and illusion, between what is there and what is not. The light has come. I can but choose the light, for it has no alternative. It has replaced the darkness, and the darkness has gone. These would prove useful forms for specific applications of this idea. This, that thing, cannot show me darkness, for the light has come. The light in you is all that I would see, friend, enemy, memory, whatever, okay? I would see in this only what is there. I would see in this, this situation, this person, place, thing, only what is there. Okay, second lesson for review. I'm under no law but God's. Probably my favorite, or at least among the top favorites, because I'll say this one's my favorite many times. <laughs> Here is the perfect statement of my freedom. I am under no laws but God's. I am constantly tempted to make up other laws and give them power over me. I suffer only because of my belief in them. They have no real effect on me at all. I am perfectly free of the effects of all laws save God's. And his laws are of freedom. For specific forms in applying this idea, these would be wonderful. My perception of this shows me I believe in laws that do not exist. I see only the laws of God at work in this. Let me allow God's laws to work in this and not my own. Okay, so the way that this one unfolded for me was kind of like the light has come was sort of like the light bulb went on and I was remembering yesterday's meditation with that vision of my hometown going from the pasture field with the cow named Bessie to the overly populated, uh, very store filled, um, just a very crowded, almost city area. The contrast between the two, it was like this phasing in and out of seeing them both at the same time and knowing that uh, neither one was actually real, but that I was meant to believe that the one that was more populated was more modern and advanced and technologically sound and, you know, is, is going to be more appealing to people, so on and so forth, right? So the light bulb came on because of those realizations and that meditation yesterday. And this idea that I mentioned from the four agreements and the fifth agreements, both books I highly recommend. Um, the four agreements, if you don't remember, are um, 
Number one, be impeccable with your word. Number two, don't make assumptions. Number three, don't take anything personally. And number four, always do your best. And then the second book that he wrote, The Fifth Agreement, is be skeptical, but be a good listener and keep your heart open. You know, whenever somebody tries to tell you what you should be doing, are they trying to sell you something? Do they have an agenda? Are they trying to manipulate you or whatever? So anyway, that light bulb that came on yesterday leads right into sort of like your own declaration of freedom, kind of like the book says, but I am under no law but God's. So as this society around me seems to change and seems to evolve in what it's calling advancement, I'm noticing that I'm actually feeling worse about myself. And whenever I conform and comply with the rules of this society, I feel like I'm a fake version of myself. I'm putting on fake beauty standards being a woman. I'm putting on uh, cynicism because I don't want to seem too happy because it just seems trendy that people have a lot of drama in their lives and there's always something to complain about or gossip about. It's like we put on these, these masks to make ourselves more acceptable in these modern and civilized places. You know, we learn how to judge people more. We learn how to, um, you know, just find out what other people would think was most acceptable about us as we step out into the night or into the day. And, you know, all of those things are obviously illusions of the ego. And the ego is trying to convince us that if we want to keep up with everyone, if we want to be accepted, we need to conform and comply and yada, yada, yada. So now this isn't easy for some people to hear, you know, and, and I understand that. But I think part of being here in the Costa Rican jungle for a month, I've lived in harmony with nature as much as I could. Like I have indoor plumbing. I'm sleeping in a bed right here next to where the camera is. But that's it. I'm just in this cabin. There's nothing else here. And I hear nature all the time. The windows are always open. So it's such an interesting contrast between being in like a busy town and knowing that there's all these things that are like pulling my attention. Whereas here, it's like I'm, I'm in the flow of it all. Nothing's expecting me to do anything or look a certain way or smell a certain way or anything. It's just like you're just part of the flow of nature. And it feels much more in line with um, just being connected to God and having access to my open channel to God while I'm here versus when I'm in a more crowded popular place because I think you're just in the energies of a whole bunch of people and you can't help, especially if you're empathic, you can't help but kind of dial into those frequencies and then you kind of look at yourself in the mirror and you're like, oh, do I fit in? Does this work for me? Should I have handled that differently? You know, you start doubting yourself and, and that's the worst thing. You know, having awareness first that you have a one true self and then also having awareness that you've been trained basically in your society to doubt it and to mold it into something that is acceptable for other people and that you're supposed to learn to love it. So no, I'm under no law but God's. The light has come, bling, the light bulb goes off. And then the next logical step is, oh, that's right, because I'm under no law but God's. So it gives you yet another chance today to go back and look at those places where you are conforming and complying, even if it's in your own household and it's more about maybe an agreement that you've made or a sacrifice that you've made that you want to renege on and be like, you know what? I know I've been saying this or doing this for a long time, but it's just, it's not really what I want to do. It doesn't feel authentic to me. I feel like I'm, you know, lying or doing a disservice in the household. I want to change things. I mean, having the courage to even have those kind of conversations is stepping into your freedom with I'm under no law but God's because the truth is it doesn't matter what kind of agreements you have everything is always up for discussion and adjustment and and an, another compromise a new compromise because we're always growing and changing and nothing stays the same forever so being under God's laws means yes there are these universal principles around like you know, not harming other people 
and not interfering in other people's journey to the best of your ability. Things like that. But you are a free being. You're a wild being. And, you know, I have to tell you guys, just being here and, and like I said a minute ago, like living in harmony with nature and feeling my wildness and my just lack of uh, feeling called to conform to any kind of standards at all other than just like there's a certain time where we have to go and meet the director in the morning and get our vitals and things like that. I mean, that's the only thing we're conforming to. Oh, and those meal times. You best believe I'm not missing a meal time. But, you know, this this experience has taught me to what it feels like to live in freedom and to be so close to nature. I mean, I'm I'm just in the heart of the jungle here. And interestingly, when I was reading the Blue Zones the other day, uh, this particular area here in Costa Rica is considered a blue zone. And I don't know if it still is because unfortunately, a lot of American culture comes here with your fast food and your, you know, your coffees and all that stuff. And people's health is starting to decline. Shocker. However, you know, the, the harmony in nature hasn't changed. So people are just making bad decisions and that's really on them. That's their journey. Just because you're tempted by something that's new that comes from America doesn't mean that you have to have it. Definitely doesn't mean you have to have it more than once. <laughs> so anyway, lesson 88 today, I think is a wonderful step towards our salvation right after yesterday's lesson that keeps you in that mindset of having more awareness about yourself, looking at yourself, what is influencing you to act the way that you act, to talk the way that you talk, to treat people the way that you treat people, to do all the things that you do. Who is in charge of that? Who's in charge of what is running your life? If you're, if you have this schedule or if you have no schedule, you know, maybe you're one of those people, which I'm probably more aligned with that nowadays. Just there's, there's no structure at all to your life. And there is something value about having discipline and even just having the idea that you want to take better care of your body and you want to have uh, a feeling of satisfaction from accomplishing something throughout the day. That'll help you get more structure if you're sort of out there and not really doing much besides doing this in the morning with me, which I think is wonderful. Thank you. So hopefully that helps you. Um, what I can share with you about the, the refeeding experience is we are having these meals we're eating four times a day and most of the meals are um just one thing so it's one type of fruit a plate of papaya a plate of mango and yesterday we were introduced back to lettuce so we, we were given a bowl of lettuce to make lettuce wraps with our fruit and so i chose mango to pair with the lettuce and it was delicious like just being able to have these super simple things First of all, you, the taste explosion in my mouth is amazing because during the fast, basically my whole entire taste bud structure was revamped or, you know, reborn or something happened because everything just tastes so good. And my digestive system is now being prepared to be able to eat more different kinds of uh, tender greens for salads I'm going to be eating. So we're, we're being like led back into what is a normal eating lifestyle, at least for this high level of post water fast eating plan. And uh, I'm just so grateful. And I, I love being able to focus on one type of fruit at a time. And I think the digest, well, I know the digestive system really appreciates that too. It doesn't have to figure out all the different juices it has to secrete in order to digest the amalgamation of things that you're throwing in at any given time. So I think my body's really appreciating what I'm doing here with the refeed. I'm definitely still drinking lots of water. I think yesterday was 6.25 liters. And um, I'm going to keep that up because it helps. I'm still detoxifying. I, I still go through periods of feeling like a little nauseous, a little tired. And then also um, knowing that there's still a lot of old waste that's in my system that needs to be removed. And the only way that can happen is if I remain very hydrated and eat high water content fruits and uh, leafy greens. So that's the plan for me. I'm gonna keep doing it and telling you about it. 
So I hope you enjoy your lesson today and you're feeling great. You're feeling free. You're feeling wild and undomesticated, undomesticated. We, that's something that I really have taken from this experience is, is just the contrast between the civilized domesticated world and being out here. Totally amazing. So I love you all very much. Thank you for being here and I will see you back again tomorrow.